as you know, um, and as we're going to see right uh, uh, after this, uh, there's a whole uh, small Cambrian e explosion of IPFS implementations happening. And uh, that comes with the risk that you know, we could lose cohesion uh, in terms of what IPFS is and, and, and how the entire ecosystem fits together. And so in order to prevent that from happening, we've been working on a set of core principles that all of IPFS can share, because if we have a shared foundation, a shared set of principles, then everyone can go and, and play and, and invent crazy things, and the, the entire system retains its cohesion and can work together. Um, a part of that, one thing that's important to understand um, is that uh, we tend to think of principles as the first thing you do. You know, you go, you want to build something, and first you do the principles, and then you lay the foundations, and then you start building. Um, but in practice, what actually happens um, is that, you know, we build things and then we figure out why we got it right or what we got wrong and, and what's wrong about it and how we have to change it. And that's why the idea here is that the, this principal document is meant to be a living document. Uh, you know, on the internet, on the web, uh, these, these things have been like built and rebuilt for decades and we're still finding new principles and documenting new principles. And the idea is that we really should be doing the same here. And so the first batch, uh, landed, and it, it's actually pretty straightforward. If you have, you know, basically two primary char characteristics, um, you, you can have something that's, that's uh, IPFS-like. First, um, you need, you know, content that is uh, content-addressed uh, with verifiability at, at the endpoints. And uh, second, which is tied to the first, if you have that, then you can use arbitrary transports. And so that's basically everything you need to guarantee that something can be IPFS-like in principle. And you know, in a sense, you could, you could have a song saying like, all you need is SIDS. Dun, 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 dun. Um, so, um, <laughs> but uh, based on those ver two, two very basic characteristics, um, we, can, we can already see you know, uh, outcomes that, that are positive in terms of, 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 of the, 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 the results. Um, so first, you get, you know, just from that, you get self-certified addressability. If you think of the way that address, addressing works on the web, we tend to always say, oh, but there's a problem because we delegate to, to DNS, but it's not just delegation to DNS. Authority is also delegated to the server itself. And that's actually how it was designed. The idea is that you go to DNS, DNS tells you where the server is, and then as a user, you are effectively on someone's property. And anything you get is something that they have validated for you, that they promise is what they're, they're supposed to be giving you, and that's all you can find out about it. The idea is that you know, this creates an, an asymmetry of power between you as a user and the person running the server. Basically, it's, everything becomes a benevolent dictatorship, or at least the best you can get is a benevolent dictatorship. It's always a dictatorship anyway. Um, with you know, with self-certified addressability, you don't need to rely on anyone else's um, authority, you can just get it uh, and, and verify it yourself. And this makes CIDs the trust model of IPFS. And the second um, you know, outcome of these very two basic uh, principles is that you get better robustness uh, from it. Uh, we've all heard this, this principle that you know, you're supposed to be liberal in what you accept and, and conservative in what you send when you're writing network protocols. And it sounds nice. It sounds like you know, the kind of person you want to be, like you're, you're open to anything that other people uh, might do, but you, you're careful about what, what, you, what you do yourself. Um, but in practice, you know, it turns out when you run that over decades and decades, it actually creates a big mess. It was a huge effort to clean up HTTP after doing you know, that kind of stuff for, for, for a while. It was a massive effort just to get the HTML par parsing algorithm right you know, after, after a couple uh, decades of doing it this way. And so basically, if you look at those core principles, um, the, those two characteristics, we get something that is a new robustness principle that is specific to IPFS, and that's actually better. It's being strict about the outcomes. You want to be strict at the endpoints, and this allows you to be completely tolerant about anything in the middle. You could have a carrier pigeon. So long as you have a CID, it doesn't matter. You can just like put the content in it. It doesn't matter where it transfer, tra you know, what it goes through, what happens to it in the middle. You can still check that it's there, and this creates a, a level of robustness that enables experimentation and any kind of wild implementation um, you know, design that anyone might come up with so that IPFS can work in uh, you know, all kinds of situations, um, any kind of device, any kind of uh, network topology. And with that, um, that's it.